So this is a good uh, thing that uh, Chris is making up. What are some of your Arkham moments where you should be committed to the asylum as soon as the play happens? And here's one of them for me. Adam Wainwright's curveball to Carlos Beltran. Oh my God, it was that was just so nasty. And, and Mets fans forget it. They go, oh, he's the oh, bat on his shoulder, 3-2. No, he didn't. It was 0-2. And that, that curveball, I still look at the highlight and I still can't swing in it. It's just that bad. Philk? Not necessarily a play, but a trade. And it was Sergei Zubov and Peter Nedved for Luke Robitaille and Paul Samuelson. Yeah. Just any Ranger fan, just at the time, you were looking like, oh, Luke Robitaille, awesome. But you gave up Sergei Zubov and the most lethal power play for so long and a really good defenseman because he wasn't big or strong enough to handle the Legion of Doom. It was such a, such a panic move to, to try to ca- counteract Eric Lindros. And Robitaille just never, ever worked in New York. Just just didn't. Just wasn't going to. So. Um, Anthony? I mean, obviously I can go with the most recent one, but I'll go... Uh... 2016, round two, game three, Islanders, Tampa Bay. Islanders are up 2-1. Series is tied 1-1. They would have went up 2-1. Uh, Fred Flintstone, a.k.a. Jack Capuano, put the trio of Tavares, Oposto, and Franz Nielsen on the ice. Kucherov ties the game with 40 seconds left. Lightning win. Um, go up 2-1, and then they won out the rest of the way to beat the Islanders in five. But... Um, why Franz Nielsen I could see you know he was he for a while there in his prime you know he was a guy that you know would garner some selkie votes never finished in the top three but he he was well respected around the league as a good two-way center Um, so him fine but why Oposo and Nielsen were on the ice in that situation and that and not you know Cal Clutterbuck or Nikolai Kuhlman or or Casey Sezikis I, I don't understand Fred Flintstone. He was literally he was literally the worst. Um, and that decision right there, you know, obviously I only could have won that game and still lost the series, but they would have been up two one and it's a, it's a it's a different series. That moment, um, I lost I lost my mind. Uh, I'm gonna go with Adam Henrique. Uh, there are other goals that are more devastating. Alec Martinez, I always just kind of shrug and go, it, it happened in the Stanley Cup Finals. And I can't help but say that was three games. The, the Rangers lost the Stanley Cup by three goals. And that still drives me crazy. And I still think, by the way, we had a comment about that. The White, inter- the White King interfering with Henrik Goldquist, my 36th birthday, by the way. And it was it's still something I, I go, how is this even possible? But, but the White King was definitely interfering with Henrik Lundqvist. There shouldn't have been a third goal, never mind a fourth goal later, but that's what happens. You end up giving teams momentum. So who's the people I can't forgive in there? Not Dwight King, not Ryan McDonald trying to box him out. How do the refs not not make that call? But, um, uh, yeah, Cal Calderburg is a good hockey name for anyone that's not an Islander. Screw them. But it's... <laughs> Um, but the Adam Henrique goal, I really, I actually, I wrote an article. It was for, uh, uh, of all things, hockeyticketsonline.net. And I was doing a postseason blog. And I said how the, I did the 25th anniversary or the 20, uh, the, the anniversary, the 18th anniversary of the Messier guarantee. And it was on the day of the Messier guarantee. And the same script happened. Uh, the Rangers fell behind by two goals. They came back. Then it went to overtime, and the captain, of course, by the way, Ryan Callahan, had the game-tying goal. So then I'm thinking, all right, it's going to come out of it. And then before people even could get their drinks for overtime, it was over. And then, yeah. I mean, give Doc credit for that one. Uh, yeah, um, there was something else that I wanted to go over in the rumor mill. Um, it was actually Rangers-related. Um, Frank Valley is actually reporting that the Patriots have actually finalized plans to buy out Tony D'Angelo. 
Well, we knew that was going to happen. But now, um, now they're saying that it, it, it's it's going to happen once oh, well. the buyout window opens up, is what Frank is reporting. Oh. Uh, it'll leave a cap charge of uh, 383000 this upcoming season and 883000 the following year. So it's obviously it's at one third the price of a normal buyout because of the fact that he's a restricted free agent. So, um, you know, now with Kevin Shattenkirk's and Henrik Lundqvist's buyouts going down, Dan Girardi's entering the final two years of his buyout at $1.1 million. The dead cap on the books is a lot more manageable than it was this past season, and the over ten million that was on the books for it. So, um, I have to ask this question before, because everybody's looking at the okay. beefcake that is Mr. Anthony Larocco. <laughs> did you, when you dove in the pool, did you were you wearing the hat? No, I took it off. <laughs> I figured a little entertainment value. I figured people see, catch the little uh, the little dive there in the corner. <laughs> uh, um, Phil, any other um, Arca moments that come to your mind? I got one more. Go, Justin, yeah, go ahead, Ant. I, I got I got two of them, and they're both in the same game for me. Um, the the Derek Stepan. Cough up the pass up the middle at the end of the period, uh, and then and bleh, end of the first period in Game One against the Kings in the Stanley Cup Finals in 2014. That ended up leading to that fluky Kyle Clifford goal. If it wasn't for that, they lead that period two nothing, and that's a completely different game, mm -hmm. which also led to Drew Doughty absolutely bucking Kevin Klein to tie the game to bring it to overtime. And then what happened in overtime? Dan Girardi. Not being able yeah. to in his feet, uh, that led to Justin Williams scoring. Maybe we never get to that point with Dan Girardi. Yeah, Anthony. So yeah, uh, um, I got I, I got to go, with, which has happened the game seven where Bailey and Paul Murray just got crossed up. They both didn't know who was going to stay high in the slot. They both went to the wall, and you guys know what happened. I was like, I I, I couldn't even believe what they were thinking or why they let that happen, but. Um, yeah, I, I was I was so pissed off after that goal because I'm like, you kidding me? Shorthanded goal? Like it's bad enough. You can't let the lightning on the power play because they're always a threat to score. Now you have a power play and you're giving up a goal to them. I'm like that. I'm like, I was just furious. I was absolutely furious. And uh, Ziga, I'm I'm actually gonna mention your comment right here because it's funny. This is the one that who gave me the oh no. It was uh, signing Mike Keen and Brian Scrudelin was yours. Mine was, my friend Russ called me up on the free agent frenzy and said, uh, they, did you hear the news? Did you hear the news? You guys signed Casper. What? You guys signed Casper. The Rangers got Casperitis, who was his favorite New York Islander. One of my friends. One of my best friends. He's yelling at me because the Rangers signed Casperitis. I was yelling at him louder because the Rangers signed Casperitis. Darius Casperitis has one, one contribution as a New York Ranger being injured and then Dan Girardi got on the roster and like him or not he was there 10 years guys so that's where you get a defenseman that's there for a while uh, <laughs> oh god yeah uh, the trade was 1999 which ended up giving them the fourth overall pick because the Rangers and, and the Lightning the Rangers took the Lightning's pick that year and they gave the Lightning their pick next year in 2000, so the Rangers didn't have a first rounder in 2000. But at the fourth overall pick in 99, they took Pavel Brendel, who ended up being, funny enough, offered in two different deals. Um, in July of 2001, he was offered in what was reported as a near done deal for Yaramir Yager. And it was Pavel Brendel, Kim Janssen, and Jan Halavic plus a third round draft pick to Washington for Yarmir Yager. Then um, that deal, Craig Patrick pulled off the deal Craig Patrick years beforehand, unceremoniously fired by the Rangers. So Craig Patrick did not like the Rangers at all. What did he do? Turned around and dealt Yarmir Yager to Washington for Franishek Kuchera, Michael Civic, Ross Lukashuk, 
and Chris Beach. And what did that do for Washington? Zero. Yeah. That's a that's an interesting name there. A little tidbit of history. Well, it's I mean again, Pavel Brandel still tied in goal scored for the New York Rangers with Hugh Jessamine and us. So I, I, I gotta I gotta actually rain fans this about your Park of Asylum moment. What about how do you guys react when um it was the last game of the season, the shootout against Philly where Ole Jokinen had the season on his stick and he that miserable attempt. I mean, I'm sure that that probably sent Ranger fans to to there. You know what? I actually think that's the clip where 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 Phil says to me, "You're going to mention the name. I'm going to get PTSD." No, they got Hugh Jessamine. No, that's not. No, it. the clip oh. for the clip for his intro. I think that was it. Oh, because okay. I started trying to say it. And, uh, no, uh, I'm pretty sure that was Hugh Jessamine that I was talking about. That name gives me PTSD. Well, because oh, I'll, I'll have to double check the uh, the clip again. You, but. you know exactly where you're going with this one. Because oh. <laughs> after all, who's got Go one of the Biden best me. shootout percentages of all time? You, do you really need to like remind me of this? You, like, I, it, I'm going to hear the name and I'm going to get PTSD. Yeah. I mean, I, I, I'm pretty sure it's Jessamine. If it's wrong, wrong, but it does. I tell you right now, that moment, I got so mad that I threw my remote down on my bed and it ended up bouncing off the bed and put a nice little dent in the wall <laughs> behind my bed and I had to cover the wall up with the pillow for a long time with that because I didn't want my family seeing what happened with that. Um, I was so disgusted that I screamed at the TV for about 10 minutes. <laughs> If you like that video, we got a lot more. So check out any of these that are right over here. And don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Your ideas are intriguing to me, and I wish to subscribe to your newsletter.